Hidden 300 feet below the ocean waves, just 16 miles off the Florida shoreline, lies a mystical and fragile treasure. For centuries seen only by the fish and other creatures that inhabit it. The only humans aware of its rich diversity of life are the scientists studying these unique reefs and the fishermen that trawl this delicate ecosystem to destruction. Using the Johnson Sea Link band submersibles and a remotely operated vehicle known as CORD, scientists from the Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institution discovered the deepwater Oculana reefs in 1975. These eerie white coral reefs are found only off the coast of Florida and nowhere else on Earth. They are entirely composed of a single species of coral, the ivory tree coral, Oculina varicosa, that can build reefs up to 100 feet tall. The deep water Oculina reefs are similar to the shallow water cousins with one distinction. The deep water Oculina corals lack zooxanthellae, microscopic single celled plants that live inside shallow water coral, converting sunlight into food, a biological process known as photosynthesis. Deep Oculina coral capture plankton and nutrients from the rapidly flowing Gulf Stream. The Oculina reefs are located 200 to 300 feet below the surface, anywhere from 16 to 50 miles offshore. When the Harbor Branch submersibles first dived on the reefs in the mid-1970s, the scientists aboard witnessed an unexpected diversity of life located on and around the Oculina reefs. A special form of diving known as lockout diving, when a diver actually swims out of the JSL submersible, allowed scientists like John Reed to study the Oculina reefs firsthand. Back in the 1970s and early 80s, we used lockout diving, where we're actually tethered to the sub and breathe a spatial gas mixture of helium and oxygen and we used this to dive down to 300 feet deep. This allowed me to do most of my experiments that I couldn't have done otherwise, such as studying the growth rate of the coral and studying the community of animals that lived within the coral. When he examined a small Oculina coral colony, merely the size of a soccer ball, he discovered that this little Oculina castle was home to over 2,000 little animals including hundreds of species of worms, clams, snails, crabs, and shrimp that had bored or crawled into the coral habitat. Many more dives were made on the reefs throughout the 1970s and into the late 1980s. In turn, more Oculana mounds were discovered, reaching as far north as Cape Canaveral and as far south as Fort Pierce. Unfortunately, in some places where the scientists expected to find a beautiful, living, and growing coral mound, they discovered only rubble. Tiny pieces of the fragile Oculina littered the seafloor, and the vast schools of fish that usually swam along the reefs had vanished, along with the legions of smaller invertebrates. Deep cuts were carved into this abandoned ghost town of broken coral. Could these be a clue to the cause of the coral's destruction? Complete reefs were decimated by bottom trawlers, destroying in a single moment what took centuries to build. Fish that do escape the trawl's gaping mouth are left without the nooks and crannies the coral provided as shelter. In addition, their food source has disappeared into the nets. Bottom trawlers capture thousands of fish and shrimp in a single trawl, but destroy the reef in the process. In search of more catch, the trawlers move from reef to reef, leaving behind ruins. In 1984, the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council recognized the importance of the Oceana reefs, 
designating a 92 square mile section as the Oculina habitat area of particular concern. This area was closed to trawling, dredging, and longline fishing. Unfortunately, only the southern half of the reefs were located within these protected boundaries. The northern half, left unprotected, remained vulnerable to destructive fishing practices. Scientists noticed a dramatic decrease in fish populations as they dove on the reefs in the 1990s when compared to the 1970s and early 80s. Once, dense schools of scamp and gag grouper formed spawning aggregations over the living reefs, and large groupers over 200 pounds were common. Schools of amberjack were so thick the scientists would lose sight of the reef just 10 feet in front of the sub. By 1994, those vast schools had been virtually depleted. Overfishing and the damage it caused had taken its toll. So in 1994, the South Atlantic Fishery Management Council went a step further and closed the original 92 square mile reserve to all bottom fishing for at least 10 years, creating the first marine protected area in the United States. The council wanted to see if fish populations could increase and bring back the previous levels of spawning aggregations. The reefs near Cape Canaveral were carefully documented in the 1970s and 80s using photography and video. Submersible transects of the reef were remade in 2001, clearly showing the devastation after 20 years of unrestricted trawling activity. Scientists have deployed several man-made devices to help the Oculina coral grow by giving them a stable foundation. Artificial reef balls and reef blocks were placed in the late 1990s and 2000s. Deep sea research has shown that the Oculina will grow on these artificial surfaces. However, Oculina, like most deep water coral, grows very slowly at a rate of only about half an inch a year. A large colony the size of a Volkswagen Beetle could easily be over 100 years old. In 2003, the Oculina Marine Protected Area, which prohibited bottom fishing on the southern Oculina reefs for the previous 10 years, was extended indefinitely. Recent research indicates the fish are slowly coming back. Jeff's Reef, located in the protected zone since 1984, is an example of one reef that has flourished. Oculina corals grow surrounded by sea urchins and schools of amberjacks, groupers, and others. This reef is proof that the Oculina corals are not yet a lost treasure, but rather a prize buried in Florida's very own backyard. With careful management, this treasure will prosper and thrive for generations. In 2000, the Oculina habitat area of particular concern was further expanded to 300 square miles, protecting the majority of the known deep water reefs. Thanks to the efforts of scientists and forward-thinking legislation, the Oculina Reef's national treasure has not only survived, but is continuing to grow.